Welcome. So we have here an AC source connected to capacitor and we're gonna look at an AC source connected to an inductor. And so the first thing we wanna do is we wanna use Kirchhoff's loop rule. And there's two different things we can do from this loop rule. The first thing we can do is we can just look at the voltage of the source minus the voltage of the capacitor has to equal zero. That whatever this source adds, this capacitor will drop. And so then we can then write the voltage of our capacitor as a function of time is just going to be equal to the voltage of our source, which is capital V max cosine omega t. But maybe a bit more interesting is if we also use the fact that the voltage of a capacitor is Q over C. So we can do that as well. We have V max cosine omega t as our voltage of our source minus one over C times charge as a function of time equaling zero. So solving for Q of t, we get that our charge as a function of time is equal to C times V max times cosine of omega t. This looks great, and now we know the charge as a function of time in this. If we want to find the current, we know that our current as a function of time is just the derivative of charge as a function of time. So we can just take the derivative here. C and V are constants and remain unchanged. Cosine will give us negative sine of omega t. And since we have the omega here, we can do this. This is looking great, except we want to know the relative phase of cosine with negative sine. So if we pull back from a little bit of trig, we might remember a relationship that negative sine of omega t is equal to cosine of omega t plus pi over 2. So this would give us then that our current as a function of time was omega C capital V max cosine of omega T plus pi over two. So let's bring this all in one little place. So when voltage is the shared measurement, then we have the voltage of a capacitor as a function of time is capital V max cosine of omega t and the current over the capacitor as a function of time is omega times C times capital V max cosine of omega t plus pi over 2. Excellent. That's looking great, but we also can think of what happens when current is the shared measurement. So we would have current be the shared measurement if we had multiple elements in series. We'd have voltage be the shared measurement if multiple elements were in parallel. So then we would have I sub C as a function of time would be the maximum current times cosine of omega T. That we would say the phase for our current would be zero and then our voltage would be changed from this. So our voltage of our capacitor as a function of time, our relationship between I max, which is omega C V max, is that then we can divide by omega C and we will get V max. So this would be I max divided by omega C. And this would be cosine of omega T. But since our current leads by pi over two, our voltage then we can also say lags by pi over two. So if we want instead, we can look at the phasor diagram of this. So our phasor diagram of this is that we have a current 
I max, and then the x projection of this current, because it's cosine, is going to be I of t. This angle is our omega t. So if this is then, then our voltage would be minus pi over 2 from this. So it would be 90 degrees behind. And this would be our capital V max. And then this projection would be our voltage as a function of time. So this is for right capacitors. So very often, the current being the shared measurement is slightly more useful just because we're going to have a lot more elements in series with each other than parallel. But we kind of usually learn it with voltage as the shared measurement. So whichever one we're using is going to be the one that we want to use.